good afternoon. We'll call the meeting to order. And if we can begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Trustee Suma, if you would lead us in the pledge, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you please remain standing if you choose, I, I'd like to ask uh, Trustee Alexander to lead us in a moment of prayer. Just please bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we appreciate this opportunity to assemble here. We ask for your guidance, Lord, that uh, we make our decisions wisely upon our constituents. We know as we enter the last half of this week, leading up into a very special weekend, that uh, we ask for your blessing and guidance and remembrance of our military men and women who died for our freedoms. In your name we pray, amen. amen. We'd ask for our roll call from the Deputy Secretary. Josh Freeman. Present. Larry Green. Present. Richard Hamill. Here. Jamie Curtis. Here. Joseph Suma. Here. Greg Alexander. Here. Dane Walling. Here. Also present. Chief Executive Officer Jeff Wright and Corporation Council Kevin Kilby. Does that constitute a quorum? Yes, sir, it does. To take action. Okay, thank you. Uh, with that, we'll go to our first item on the agenda, the minutes of the February 18th, 2015 meeting. It's been moved. Support. support. And supported. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes have been approved. We also have in our packet the treasurer's report. I just want to bring to your attention on the treasurer's report that the way we've moved to a different format uh, from this point forward. In the past, I think everything you had seen had been uh, done in Excel. We've now uh, got all the finances of the KWA system uh, into the financial package that uh, we utilize. It just happens to be called New World Systems. So these reports that you have in front of you today really are from that uh, um, financial system. Um, I believe that uh, this is in another section of the uh, agenda today as well, but uh, Mr. O'Brien had uh, created a memo uh, to uh, CEO Wright uh, that uh, brings to your attention the operations budget for the first six months. And uh, I don't know if there are any questions on that, but everything um, that has been expended so far has been within the guidelines of the budget and has actually been uh, substantially um, below the spending level and we're uh, right on budget for revenues. And then uh, in addition to that report, uh, we've also supplied a balance sheet for both the operations fund and the construction funds. And then the uh, last report, the one that says operations fund uh, AP invoice report, uh, simply shows the various expenditures kind of by line item that have been made uh, in the first, uh, well through April 30th actually, I think first seven months. Mr. Chairman? Yes. If I could, for the audience's benefit, I'd also like to introduce Trudy Nichols, who's the treasurer for the KWA. She is also the clerk. Or, excuse me. Treasurer here. Treasurer for Santa County. Thank you. That's the second time I've it's called right. you. It's all right. Maybe what he vote? She owns the building. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and then Carl Kramer, who works with our office, also is, is involved with the treasurer. I wanted to make sure the audience knew who everybody was. So we have the treasurer's report as presented. We have a motion to approve. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any further discussion or questions on the treasurer's report? Okay. Seeing none, um, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? The report is approved as received. Thank you. We'll note uh, three uh, items here under communication. Uh, the first, I just want to draw your attention to an item that I had shared uh, with our staff to be included in the packet. Um, there's a, uh, a brief summary of a, a new report on Michigan's uh, blue economy. Uh, John Austin, who's a, a non-resident fellow at the uh, Brookings Institute and, and uh, a center at Grand Valley State University, 
uh, put this together. I think it's very much in line with the vision we have around economic development around the pipeline, so I, I wanted that to be brought to the trustees' attention. Uh, we also have a communication from the Finance Subcommittee. We have someone who's to speak to that item, CEO. Uh, John O'Brien, Deputy CEO. As you recall at your previous meeting, uh, you agreed to turn the ad hoc finance committee into a um, regular standing committee, and one of their tasks was to establish uh, uh, an opportunity for them to review and work through the budget prior to being submitted to the board. Uh, currently, we have four members. Uh, by that last resolution, you established it could be up to six members. Uh, Trustee Hamill is, is the chair of that committee. Uh, Larry Green, Josh, and Dale Kerbison are on the committee. So if you would like to expand the committee, you can expand it with one more board member and one incorporating board member. Uh, the appointments are at the pleasure of the chairman of the board. Uh, and so we're like we're looking to schedule a meeting uh, in June, July of this year, so that we can begin the budget process to be presented at the August meeting. So it's a clarification of what is the pleasure of the board if they want to leave the members at four or expand it. Okay, thank you. And I do see um, in the middle of the packet there is um, a description of this from from legal counsel, uh, so that it's clear how the committee is to be established. Any uh, suggestions or discussion related to that matter? We do have four members on the committee. It meets the, the minimum requirements uh, so we can leave the committee as is or, or take suggestions for additional members before the meeting uh, in the next month or two. Trustee Hamilton. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I'm uh, comfortable with the way the board sits now, but certainly would entertain anybody else who would be interested in serving at the board. It makes sense. Okay, well, well, thank you for your leadership. I, I don't see anyone else to be recognized, so we'll, we'll proceed with the committee uh, as established. Uh, and, and thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, the third communication item is uh, on the 2015 financial. I think uh, this was alluded to by Carl. If I may, Mr. Chairman? Yes. There is a pretty, quite a detailed financial report on revenues and expenditures in your packet. And if I may take the time very quickly to inform the board that um, all portions of the KWA contract have been let now. All portions have came in below the engineer's estimate and all portions from the pump stations, the intake, and the three different Pipe, excuse me, four different pipe contracts that not only came in below the engineer's estimate, but they are all under construction now. So you have the Agostini and Sons. You have the, you have the Agostini and Sons working on the intake, the lake pump station, and the 66-inch diameter pipe along Fisher Road. You have Rickman Construction <coughs> started just most recently on their portion, which is just west of the Diagostini portion, and then you have Zigo Construction, who is close to completion of the pipeline within Genesee County, and is starting the 60-inch diameter pipeline in uh, Lapeer County. The intermediate pump station itself, um, the building itself is complete to the point where the brick is even up, and they'll be installing the interior pumps, motors, switching gear, etc over the next several months. So the pipeline is on schedule, um, and all contracts are built and under construction. And if there's any questions on any part of that, or any of the financials that are involved with that, we'd be glad to take them to the board. Okay, thank you. Any, any discussion on that communication item? Okay, with that, we'll move to the consent agenda, uh, item four of the agenda not have a consent agenda at this meeting <coughs> brings us to our, our fifth item our public comment period for those of you who attended our meetings in the past you know that this body has two public comment periods the first is related uh, please to agenda items only uh, that uh, allows for 
the public to make comment before the board takes actions on anything other than simply approving the treasurer's report and minutes. Uh, later in the meeting, we'll have a, an open public comment period, at which time anyone from the public who has something they believe is important for this body to hear uh, can bring that forward. So with that, I'd open up the first public comment period for agenda items only. I'll make a second call. Okay, seeing none, we'll, we'll close that comment period. Uh, we have no old business. We do have one item of new business, the, the FOIA policy. Uh, Legal counsel? Yes, sir. Thank you. Before you have resolution 2015-03, everybody in this room serves on some sort of public body, so I think everybody's aware the Freedom of Information Act has been amended in the state of Michigan. And basically just a few areas, how an individual requests a FOIA, how we respond to a FOIA, and the cost involved in processing that FOIA. And with that being said, the law requires that by July 1 of 2015, if you're a public body and you're going to charge a fee for FOIA, there's certain procedures and guidelines you have to have in place and summaries you have to have in place. All those documents are a part of this in your packet today. So this resolution will approve all those forms, including the time limits set forth in those forms and the fees, and also it designates the CEO or, the, or his designee as a FOIA coordinator for KWA. So beyond that, I'll answer any questions anybody will have. Okay. Well, well, thank you for presenting. If we could start with a, a motion um, to approve resolution 2015-03, uh, which is the adoption. Okay, it's been moved. Support. Moved and supported. Okay, with that, is there a discussion on the motion? I just uh, take the time to thank you for being proactive and putting this policy in place. Uh, it will allow us to process those requests uh, expeditiously and ensure that, that our authority can recover a cost when appropriate, uh, which I think is to, to our benefit as well as the public's. Uh, seeing no further, best, Trustee this, Alexander. This guideline, this procedure has to be listed on our website as well, correct? Correct. Website, and then it has to be available at the, our corporation office, 4610 Beach Road in Flint. Um, anybody can walk in free of charge and get a copy of it. Seeing no further discussion on the motion, all those in favor of resolution 2015-03, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. That motion carries. Thank you. Bring us to our, our second public comment period. Uh, this is open to anyone who would like to make comment uh, before this body. Welcome to do that now. Yes, please. And I'll, I'll note as you're going forward that it's, it's our protocol that uh, there may be questions or uh, other comments that, that board members or our CEO may want to respond to. Um, we have an opportunity at the end of our meeting to make board comment. We include our CEO in that. So if you do happen to have specific questions or comments, we'll, we'll take those down and make sure they get covered before the end of the meeting in uh, proper protocol. Mm -hmm. Yes, and if you would, for our records, give us give us your name and address. Certainly. My name is Laura Lisa Seven, and um, I live at 341 Reby Lane, Flint, Michigan. Um, I do have um, a few questions I would like to address to uh, the Karagandhi um, Water Authority Board. Um, the first question is, um, I have heard that there's a possibility, because of the amount of water we purchased, that we're going to be using our secondary source, which would be the Flint River as a blended source and I wanted to get a definite answer because there's a lot of citizens concerned with that. Um, as I uh, have been discussing this with quite a few people and there's questions that have been raised about that and we want a definite answer if possible from the board. Um, and then the second uh, question that I have has concerning um, running the pipes. Um, do you guys have records or anything like that? of soil samples um, that have been conducted through the areas that you've chosen to run the piping, because that seems to be a concern also. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Friendly, Mr. Chair. Um, Not to answer, but just to reiterate that we will answer any and all questions at the yes, end. Yes, that's right. Yeah, we sure will. 
Any further public comment? Okay. Seeing none, we'll, we'll close the, the second public comment period. Thank you for the participation. Um, this, this does bring us to our to our board comment. Um, we we usually start with our, our CEO Jeff Wright. Um, I'll also add that. Um, I, I believe the first question, um, I, I um, bring my comments at the, after everyone else, and I will respond to that question as it's really a decision of, related to the city of Flint, uh, more so than the Carignani Authority, and, and I'll certainly address that. So, uh, CEO, any uh, it, yes, the response they, to the second question as well as any other comment for the board? Yeah, it, I'll touch on both. As, as the chairman has stated, the KWA supplies untreated raw water to up to five communities, Sanilac, Genesee, and Lapeer counties, City of Flint, and potentially City of Lapeer. It's up to each one of those communities to determine how they treat that water, how they distribute that water, etc. And KWA doesn't have any input on that part of it. So I think the mayor will answer the second half of that question, but KWA only supplies the raw water. As far as the soil samples go, our route and course, which is close to 80 miles from the lake all the way to the city of Flint, and some of the properties that we utilize in between, sometimes it reminds me of molehills. We have did so many soil samples along that route. Do you have, John, an idea of how many different individual soil samples that we've done on this? Over a thousand. A lot. And it's not just because we wanted to do them. The EPA, uh, the DEQ, um, and in some instances local units of government require a lot of these soil samples as well as the engineering firms that do the design criteria for the laying of the pipe, etc. So the direct answer is yes, we've done a tremendous amount of soil sampling. Um, that soil sampling has not shown us or the EPA or the DEQ or any of the other entities involved that there's a contamination problem, if that's kind of what you were looking for. Um, it also shows us what types of soils we're dealing with and what type of groundwater elevations we're looking at, etc. So the route and course of the pipeline itself, the pumping stations where we're putting the uh, the two different facilities at the lake and at, in Lynn Township have all been tested thoroughly and are, and are all clean. Uh, one of the things that we've also done is to satisfy some other parts of the federal government is look for Indian remains, certain species of plants, animals, frogs, mosquitoes, etc. And uh, we've done all of that and all of that's came through with fine colors also. And if you ever have any questions, you're more than welcome to call direct any time. Thank you. And CEO, any other comment for the board? Not that, nothing uh, other than what I've already talked about. I'm very happy that all of the contracts are under construction and weather permitting will stay on schedule to have the pipeline and the pump stations completed uh, by June of 2016. And uh, hopefully Mother Nature will cooperate. Well, thank you for the for the great progress, um, Trustee Freeman. Any comment? Nothing. Trustee Hamill, anything further? Nothing. Trustee Green. Just wish everybody is safe uh, and enjoy the Trustee Curtis. I'm good there. Okay. Trustee Silver. Our, our host today here in San Lac County, uh, hey. Trustee Alexander. <laughs> I want to welcome you to yeah, San Lake County. Uh, we get the opportunity to swing over the lake shore and start the travel and follow the, the pipeline on the way back. And have an outstanding holiday as well. Well, well thank you for, for having us here. I think it's a good practice that we started initially of traveling to each community um, so that we can um, you know, be available for public comment as we were today and um, have a presence in each of the communities that have helped make this happen. It's great to see the progress that's been made, uh, so I want to congratulate our CEO and his team. Uh, this is a, a project of, of great magnitude and to be on schedule and on budget, uh, I think is a, a testament to the hard work. Uh, and, and we know we have a great opportunity here in front of us. Uh, 
So we'll continue to meet and we'll move the project forward. And, um, if I may, just one yes. more. The, I, I knew you might have. Yeah. More. Well, <laughs> I, I do want to reiterate the blue water economy yeah. aspect. There, yeah, this is one study. There are studies done by the Detroit Engineering Society, by the Clinton Genesee Regional Chamber, by the state of Michigan. Water is going to be very, very important to the future of the economics of the state of Michigan. And I want the audience to know that the next regularly scheduled meeting for the KWA will be. A, August 19th at the Genesee County Drain Commissioner's Office on Beecher Road. You're all welcome. There will be subcommittee meetings as stated earlier on the finance aspect of this and you're welcome to those also. Those will be posted on our website and that more than likely will be held in mid to late June or early July, I would think. So there will be a subcommittee meeting probably in Genesee County or Flint and the next regularly scheduled meeting is the 19th of August, 2 p.m., at the Drain Commissioner's Office in Genesee County. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. As far as the, the question that was raised in terms of the, the City of Flint's expected usage of the uh, water from the KWA, uh, it's, it's the City's um, full expectation that 100% of the drinking water, um, all the water processed through the plant will be from the KWA. Uh, the river is, is there only as a backup source. Um, the, the treatment process and everything is, is different um, with lake water and river water, so it would be highly complicated to try to blend those two sources. Um, the, the reference that was made to the fact that the city has contracted for 18 million gallons per day, um, it, it, that's not a hard cap on a day-by-day -day basis. There's a, there's a process established in the contract for monitoring actual usage. And um, CEO, if, if you want to uh, add to this, you may in terms of your Genesee County Drain Commissioner's hat. Uh, but in the event that we found that the city, let's say, consistently used um, 20 million gallons per day, then we would have an obligation um, to purchase that usage from the holder of, of that additional capacity, which as it's currently structured would be Genesee County Drain Commissioner. Um, so we would uh, deal with that billing on an issue as part of the, the contract and finance. If I could yeah. add to that. That is correct. Uh, the county did purchase excess capacity in the system. Uh, if the city of Flint needed a greater capacity than 18 million gallons per day, there is capacity to purchase at the same price that we purchased it with no markup. So it's not a... a uh, profit right. set up. It's per whatever it cost us. The other thing about the 18 million gallons a day, it has to average over 18 million gallons a day for a very long period of time before that kicks in. John was, we had a kick point, I think, of 20, 21 million? How did, I haven't read it in a while, so I don't. It's 18 million gallon average over a three month period. Over a three, so you'd have to average over 18 million gallons a day for three months or greater before that would even kick in. So the city's in pretty good shape, particularly with your aggressive re leak detection and reconstruction of your, your water lines that are giving you the biggest problems. I believe if you get that completed, you're probably going to be averaging closer to 14 million gallons a day. Uh, once those are completed. So you should be in pretty good shape. Right. And, and it's, it is important to understand that, that averaging time. I appreciate the reference to the three months so that everyone understands how that's calculated. So there could be a day if there were uh, multiple, uh, let's say, a, a large fire at a residential or manufacturing complex or, or a large break, uh, there could be a spike in usage. But it, it is the average over, over time, and, and the city has no intention of, of having to use river water for you know, the, the primary drinking purpose um, after the connection is able to be made to the, um, to the Carignani pipeline next year. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, again, thank everyone for their attendance and engagement. Um, I'd like to take a motion to adjourn. So been moved and supported. All those in favor, aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you.